please stand and remain standing for the posting of the colors and the Pledge of Allegiance. For those who are able to stand. Battalion Commander. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which we stand, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please take your seats. Well done, cadets. Well done, band. Please give them a nice round of applause. Outstanding job. I, I don't cease to be amazed by the amazing job our students do on everything and anything they do at the school. You're just amazing and wonderful. For the third time, let me see if I get it right this time. Good morning, everyone. 
All right, I think the students already know this, but I like to do call and recall, so hopefully you'll engage with me again. Let me try again one more time because you know, it's a little celebration, so I would like to get more engagement. Good morning, everybody. Morning. Outstanding. Now we're ready to go. So for those who I have not had the pleasure of meeting yet, I'm Jose Duarte, and I have the great honor and the privilege of being the acting principal of this illustrious institution of learning and teaching. And on behalf of our students, the most outstanding students you're going to find in the state of Massachusetts and just about anywhere, I welcome you uh, to Brockton High School. And a special note of welcome goes first to all the veterans who are here. I, I couldn't tell you how much it means to me, how much it warms my heart to see our representatives here from the, from the VA and all the veterans who are here. So for those of you who are able to stand, please stand and take a bow. Please, please stand, VA, uh, veterans. If you're a veteran, please stand if you can. Please give them a nice round of applause, cadets and everybody else. We honor and appreciate you. Please take a seat, okay? And a special note of welcome to our mayor who's joined us today. Now, thank you for being here. Our superintendent who's also a veteran and all the school officials who are here. Um, Mr. Tim Sullivan, Ms. Menz, Ms. Dubois, um, Specialist Wilson, who's a graduate of our school, who's out here with us. I know there's a couple of other who are here. I'm sorry I didn't catch your name beforehand, so welcome and good to have you here. The auxiliary ladies from uh, VFW Post 1046, we have six auxiliary members here. Great to have you here. Thank you for the service you do. You know, my wife will not allow me to forget that. You know, that all the awesome work you do. Um, please give them a round, yes. Chief Perez, who, our chief of police, who's also a veteran. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, Captain Hallisey, thank you for being here, sir. Um, we have also um, Mr. Henley, who's the commissioner. Has he arrived? Oh, there he is, okay, he's right here. Sorry, I saw you earlier. Uh, should I have asked that question? Okay. And if I missed you, I apologize. Please just wave and tell me you are here so we can recognize you. Anybody else want this? No. And all the veterans from Brockton High School, thank you for being here. Just found out that uh, about a week ago that two of us, myself and a teacher, we were at basic training in the same place, maybe one battalion over. What a small world we live in. Same time, same place. We are Fort Benning, Georgia, uh, mighty Fort Benning, Georgia. Um, today is indeed a, a, a special day. Um, as we come here together to remember, those who couldn't be here with us today, um, to celebrate and to honor those who made the, the ultimate sacrifice and those who are here with us to celebrate this day. Um, as somebody who wore the uniform for 33 years, I can tell you that there is no greater value, nothing, nothing that I treasure more, than having had the honor to serve and to protect this country and to have the ability to be free um, and to enjoy life uh, as I have. Uh, as I was reading this description that's on the program, one of the paragraphs uh, struck me a little bit, and I'll just read that to you very quickly. So more than anything else, a veteran loves freedom. He can spend a whole afternoon doing nothing just because it suits him and just because he has paid the price to do what he wants with his time. He also takes personal pride in the freedom of others, in men and women attending the church of their choice, in friends voting for how they choose, and in children sleeping quietly without the fear to interrupt their slumber. And that happens because we have veterans who have served and those who continue to serve today. So to all of you, our deepest appreciation of, for what you do. Um, so at this time, we'll have uh, the presentation uh, by the uh, BHS band of a musical selection. Thank you for those of you who are veterans out there. As we play your service song, please stand and be recognized.
the United States Marine Corps. The United States Army. The United States Coast Guard. The United States Air Force. The United States Navy. My name is Lima de Luz Pinto. I am the Boxer JRCC Battalion Commander. Although all veterans deserve to be honored, my classmates and I chose a few veterans to recognize. I chose. It wants to take a little, be a little slow. Master Sergeant Dana Clark, an Army veteran and retired JRTC instructor. Master Sergeant Clark was deployed to the Cuban, to the Mario Cuban boat lift in 1980. He was stationed in the United States of America, Germany, and Korea. The components of the United States Army that he was in was the United States Army, the United States Army Reserve, and the United States National Guard. In all, Master Sergeant Clark served for 30 years. When asking him, I found out that his least favorite assignment was December 1976, Korea winter. His unit was Alpha Company, 802nd Engineering Battalion, which was the combat heavy engineering unit, dealing with bulldozers, cranes, and general construction equipment. In his favorite opinion, his favorite assignment was November 1977, Phoenix, Arizona, computer training at Honeywell Computers headquarters. At that time, it was an introduction to a new field, a limited opportunity that was not offered to many. In his words, his most important, fun, and exciting things was to be in the U.S. Army, being an Army JROTC instructor, and a part of the Brockton High School Battalion. I asked him why he decided to work with us. He said, when I was first asked to be a JROTC instructor by my former Sergeant Major, after coming from the recruiting force, I did not think that spending my days with high school students would be for me. This became my most rewarding assignment, working with smart, resilient, excited, talented students and seeing what amazing people they were. Master Sergeant Clark is a fascinating person. He helped a lot of JRTC cadets become better people. He made us feel like a family, 
Not many people will want to work with high school students after retiring from the Army, but he did so and made us enjoy every bit of it. Master Sergeant Clark, thank you for your service. Good morning, everyone. My name is Evelyn Semedo, and I am the Boxer Battalion Executive Officer. This morning, I would like to recognize Dr. James Cobbs. Many of you may know Dr. Cobbs as the acting superintendent of Brockton Public Schools, but what you may not know is that Dr. Cobbs is a U.S. Army veteran. He enlisted in the U.S. Air Force on active duty in July 1975. He served for 14 years in the Air Force and attained the rank of Master Sergeant. His specialty in the Air Force was with a civil engineer. In the civil engineer, his unit was responsible for performing work to keep essential facilities, utilities, operating safely and efficiently. He then went on to accept commission in the U.S. Army as he graduated from Officer Candidate School, Fort Benning, Georgia, as a second lieutenant. He served in the U.S. Army as a combat engineer where he performed a variety of military tasks as well as construction demolition duties. He was also a transportation officer managing all elements and of distribution related to planning, operation, coordination, evaluation, and modes of transportation in order to move units, personnel, equipment, and supplies. Dr. Cobbs retired from the U.S. Army with the rank of major after serving for 21 years. Over those years, he has been stationed overseas in Germany, Japan, Spain, Honduras, and Kuwait. His stateside duty assignments included Fort Hood, Texas, Fort Benning, Georgia, Fort Drum, New York, Fort McCoy, Wisconsin, to name a few. When asked which was his least favorite base, he replied with Camp Virginia, Kuwait because of the sand. Um, in total, Dr. Cobb served for 35 years, both active and reserve time for our country. And even after retirement, Dr. Cobbs continues to serve our school district by having been the principal of Edison Ac Evening Academy from August 2013 to July 2021, the Brockton Public School Executive Director of Operations from 2019 to 2022, Deputy Superintendent of Operations from July 2022 to September 2023, while simultaneously holding the position of Principal of Brockton High School from September 23 to October 23. He is currently the Acting Superintendent of our school district, so please, if you ever run into Dr. Cobbs, thank him for his service. And this morning, I would like to not only honor Dr. Cobbs, but honor and thank all veterans for all the sacrifices they have made for this country. Thank you for your service. Good morning, everyone. My name is Igor Da Silva, and I'm the Battalion S3. I'd like to honor Staff Sergeant Ralph Da Silva for his sacrifice and service. He's been serving the military the past eight years, coming up on his ninth this November. Da Silva always dreamt of being in the military ever since he was a little kid. There was no better time to join the military than when he came back to the country at the age of 29. He was one of the oldest in his platoon, and he wasn't physically strong during this time, so discipline was his best friend. His first platoon sergeant, Sergeant Brown, was an inspiration to Private De Silva. Kept him going through the rough times by teaching him qualities of leadership, loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. At first, he didn't enjoy being away from family since he would be sent out of state for long periods of time. However, it was all in the name of giving back to the country that gave him a life to be proud of. Now, De Silva's specialist is now a father of two kids and a husband. He puts his life on the line for them and the country despite not being from here. He's never been deployed overseas, yet Sergeant De Silva was sent to DC for security purposes along with a COVID mission. His unit is very active in the state rather than out of state. They do things such as high water rescues and snow emergencies. Throughout the years, Staff Sergeant De Silva has managed to start and finish college. One advice he's told me passed down from his platoon sergeant is, use the military to improve your life and not just for the benefits. Know what you're doing because it ain't for babies. I'm proud to call Staff Sergeant De Silva my father. Thank you for all that you have done. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jackson Larravee. I'm the Boxer Battalion Command Sergeant Major. 
And this morning, I would like to acknowledge Nancy T. Milster, a retired Air Force Sergeant who graduated from Brockton High in 1979. Milster grew up in Brockton among four sisters and one brother, raised by their parents, Anthony and Lucille, who were both born first-generation Italian-American. Sergeant Milster enlisted into the United States Air Force in December of 1979, just after she graduated. She retired a sergeant in 1984. She spent a total of five years in the service. During that time, Sergeant Milster worked in the Traffic Management Office of the Air Force, where she would coordinate for household goods such as furniture, vehicles, and airline tickets for family members to be delivered to soldiers that were moving from one base to another. Sergeant Milster loved being in the military. She says she loved the feeling of belonging to a team. She felt that it was her duty to serve this country and is very proud of her service in the United States Air Force. During her first assignment in Little Rock Air Force Base in Arkansas, she was picked up at the airport by now retired Master Sergeant Frank Milster, who served 21 years in the Air Force. She then married Sergeant Milster in 1981 and have stayed together for over 30 years. After her first assignment, she was stationed at the RAF Upper Hayford Base in England. In 1984, Sergeant Milster was coming up on re-enlistment. During that time, however, her son Frankie was only 10 months old. If she had re-enlisted, she would have left her husband and son to be stationed in Turkey. Sergeant Milster states, leaving my husband would be one thing, but leaving my 10-month-old son, I just couldn't do that. While still being in England after her retirement, the fall of the Berlin Wall had occurred. This was a major event in United States history as it symbolized the end of the Cold War. Today, November 9th, 2023, marks the 34th anniversary of the destruction of the Berlin Wall. I am very proud to be able to call Sergeant Milster my Aunt Nancy, and I would like to thank every veteran here today for your immeasurable service and sacrifice. Thank you. Back again. Um, along with all of the veterans we have spoken about, we would like to recognize another veteran, First Sergeant Suzette Duart. First Sergeant Duart enlisted in the Army when he was 19 years old. In January 1983, he served for 33 years. Being Cape Verdean, there are times where the family is skeptical when one tries to join the military, but he said that his family was supportive of his decision. He said that the military was enlightening, that he learned a lot from it, and it was one of the greatest experiences he's had. He said that he grew in discipline and courage. He proceeded to say that when being a drill sergeant was one of his one of the best positions he's had because he was able to work and relate with young soldiers. We asked him what he thinks of the military and what he would say to someone that is planning on joining and he said, the military isn't for everyone, but if you do want to join, make sure you have the passion for it. First Sergeant Dwight is our Brockton High School principal, someone that has made progress and shown that he cared for us in the little time that he has been here. He has gone around not only introducing himself, but made the effort to learn his students and allowing us to know that he is there for, for us whenever we need him. He's trying to make changes for the better, and for one who has just came to the school, he has shown great friendship with all. Thank you for your service. To To conclude our speeches, I want to show gratitude to the Department of Veterans Affairs, who's helping veterans with either mental struggles or physical struggles. There are people that are veterans trying to help other veterans or civilians trying to show their thanks and appreciation to the veterans. Thank you for helping veterans and allowing them a place to rely on. And we would like to thank all of the staff who are veterans and a big thanks to our JRTC instructor, Master Sergeant Bailey, First Sergeant Morissette, Colonel Connery, and all of our previous instructors for taking time out of their day to be here and teaching us the values and structures of life, especially Master Sergeant Bailey, who was working alone with the JRTC Battalion, but still made everything work and allowed each and every single one of us to be better leaders without overstepping, giving us a chance to make mistakes and the chance to fix them. We wouldn't be here presenting if it was for him and the other instructors. And with that, I thank you all. Well, Battalion Command, that was very kind of you. You got to be careful what you say to students. You know, they didn't tell me that they wanted to say something about me, but it was very kind. I think you captured well what it meant to me to be a member of the United States Army. 
Um, I would have give, given you a picture to scare everybody off, if you, had I known. No, it's okay. We won't do it right now. <laughs> they want the picture now. Um, well done. And I also want to take a moment and congratulate and thank the cadre of the JRTC group here at the school, our master sergeant, the first sergeant, and the colonel for doing a, a great job preparing the kids. All the presentations that we have here uh, came to because of them. Uh, I think we just have to work, for Sergeant, we just have to work on hand, no hands in pocket. They do that all the time, so I, I always call them on the hands on the pocket, but you know, it's me, I know, I got my hands in my pocket, but you know, not in uniform. Anyways, um, so job well done. Uh, and next, we'll have a number by, by our band, um, the last full measure of devotion by the Blackton High School Band, sung by Mr. Cunningham. So Mr. Cunningham in the band. In the long and honored history of America, there are names that shine like beacons in the night. The patriots whose vision gave us meaning, who kept the lamp of freedom burning bright. In the long and honored history of America, there are those who paid the last and final price, who were called upon by chance or desperate circumstance to make the ultimate sacrifice. A grateful nation bows its head in sorrow and in thanks for guaranteeing our tomorrow. The last full measure of devotion that's what they gave to the cause the last full measure of devotion and though they cannot hear our applause we honor them forever and keep alive their story pay tribute to their lives and give them all the glory. The last full measure of devotion beyond the call of duty were their deeds. The last full measure of devotion they gave themselves to serve the greater needs. And for those who did survive and came back home alive, they join in praise of comrades who were slain and a highly resolve, most highly resolve, that these dead shall not have died in vain. The last full measure of devotion Beyond the call of duty were their deeds The last full measure of devotion They gave themselves to serve the greater needs And for those who did survive And came back home alive they join in praise of comrades who were slain. And
and a highly resolved, most highly resolved, that he's dead shall not have died in vain. Good morning, my name is Jade Miranda and I'm the Boxer Battalion Bravo First Sergeant and I will be reading A Veteran Is. American veterans are people who come in all different shapes, sizes, races, and ages. They are humble and proud knowing that they put themselves on the line to fight for their country and their people. Asking people, what is a veteran? Their responses were, someone that has served in the military, one who is strong, brave, and prideful. However, there were a few that said, a veteran is a loved one, a mother, father, son or daughter, grandchild, grandparent, and more. A veteran is a leader, someone that fulfills their duty, someone who's respectful, one who shows selfless service, an honorable person, someone with integrity, and someone that develops and continues with their personal courage. A veteran isn't just limited to a role, rank, or specific branch. They go beyond such boundaries. They are someone who has served active in the military, naval, or air service. They aren't just people in the front lines, there are nurses, engineers, mechanics, cooks, technicians, planners, and much more. There are people that have given their years to serve in the U.S. military forces. Those that have never served will never understand the struggles and sacrifices they've made, whether it was war or peace. Most will never understand what was asked of them and how they achieved it or the depth of their scars. They are fighting for our people and country so in the future they can sleep in peace knowing that kids can sleep peacefully and their parents have nothing to worry about. Veterans are not afraid of giving their all for our people and country. They admit when wrong and they stand for what is morally right. Knowing that a veteran is the first one to stand when a flag passes by on the 4th of July and the last one down when the flag leaves their sight. One who protects and understands all the values of life. We owe it to our veterans our support, appreciation, friendship, and more. They are exceptional and wonderful people, but above all else, remember that our veterans are loved ones, ones that have sacrificed to a great extent for us. Thank you for your service. Mr. Cardell.
just absolute uh, outstanding band, outstanding. Mr. Cardell, job well done to the band, the job well done to the cadet corps. So proud of you for doing such a magnificent job preparing and presenting this. To all of you who are, who are here today to celebrate, to remember, and to honor with us, I thank you so much for being here. And you know, I, I, I know I've said it several times, but I have to keep repeating. Isn't this the most wonderful group of young people you, you have seen around? And for those of you who are, who are here visiting, I'm gonna give you a little homework. I'm the principal, I think I can give you all some homework. I'm gonna ask you that as you go about your day today, as you go to, you know, back to your place of business or your homes or you see friends, choose at least six friends, at least six of them, and tell them why you came here today. And please do tell them how wonderful the students and the staff were. So please share that. Everybody needs to know that in Brockton and beyond the city limits of Brockton. So please, I'm going to give you homework, and I might even check in on you. And for those of you who don't complete the homework, you might have to come and stay after school with me and make those phone calls from here. So please make sure you go about and tell at least six. The mayor gets 12 people, but the rest of everybody else gets six. You know, so thank you for coming. Um, so at this time, I'm going to ask you to please stand for the retiring of the colors. Thank you for being here. Have an awesome day, and do not forget your homework. You don't want to be after school.